Hey, welcome back. So I want to go over sound design and sound selection. So when you're doing flow, you want something, depends what kind of flow you want. I tend to like the prettier atmospheric um, kind of ethereal sound and vibe. So I'm just going to start with the stock piano sound. Okay, we're in the key of D flat. Let's go here. Key of D flat, there we go. So as you can hear, not a bad sound, and let's go ahead and do some flow. Okay, it's not bad, but it's lacking atmosphere. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do first is, we're just gonna simply change the reverb. Let's turn some reverb on. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. So you, your piano what, or your DAW, they all have reverb. And that's that sound you hear afterwards. See, no reverb with reverb. Okay. And then by doing that, we now have sustain. Hear that so it gives us more atmosphere and you can change the different type like they have room reverb stage hall so you can choose which one you like best um, but you add the reverb and you want to do enough where you don't necessarily hear it but you feel it and then when you let the keys go that's when you can hear it right you don't want it drenched in reverb that's not a bad sound per se but it's just muddy That's more of a special effect sound I would use that for. Um, and you want a long tail. And what a long tail means is, um, so this would be a short tail, right? It ends quickly. A long tail is this. That's where the atmosphere comes in, okay? So phase one, step one, when you're doing sound design, first get a patch that you like, right? Um, find a piano that you like. You like the sound of the piano? Perfect, that's your foundation. Next, add reverb. And then you want to dial in the amount that makes you feel good. So for me, I like to turn my reverb all the way up to see what the tail sounds like. I like that. So then now that I found like the amount of reverb length, the tail, I'm going to dial it back so it blends in better. Boom. So now I can hear, that would be the dry and wet on your uh, DAW or your software or your keyboard. It's the dry and wet settings. That's the blend, how you blend it together. Okay, so you hear that? So let's do the same chord. Not bad. Now with the reverb. You hear that? So already, same progression. Without reverb. See? Night and day. And so what's really great about the reverb is that, especially when you play those embellishments at the top, you can really hear that it's like stick out. All right, so now that we have reverb taken care of, let's do some EQ. So I tend to like a little bit more of a softer attack when it comes to flow stuff, right? So this is more of a bright piano. You can hear that attack, right? The, the tinginess on top. It's really great for cutting through a mix, but in this case, I really don't want to cut through a mix. So first things first is before I EQ, I'm just going to see if there's another piano that doesn't have such a bright attack. See, that's even brighter. Brighter. That's another bright one. Definitely bright. That's softer. That's a bright grand. So I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like. 
So the Studio Grand 2 I really like. Um, okay, so I took my reverb off just so I could hear the piano by itself without any distraction. Now, your software should have an EQ, an equalizer, or your piano usually has an equalizer. On my Nord stage, I have what's cool, a little timbre button, so I can instantly change it to soft or mid or bright. Uh, kind of some predefined EQ situations, but typically, if you want to brighten, if you want to soften up your keyboard, take your uh, your you want your EQ and you want to bring down about 2,000 hertz, and you want to add a at a wide Q. So you want like a 0 0.1, 0 0.4 Q setting, and you want to bring down that 2,000 hertz area so it's not so bright, and it should sound something like this. So it's a little bit muffled sounding, but that's the point. So again, regular. We EQ some of the top off, and we get that muffled, nice sound there. So we still can hear the piano, but it's much softer, much more dreamy. And this is without reverb, this is dry, versus night and day difference. Now we're going to add our reverb back in. Ooh, that's sounding really good. You see that? So now we're getting somewhere. So now we've got this great reverb and we have this great, um, great reverb and then we have a great EQ setting. So. That sounds amazing. And all we did was EQ, reverb, and that's it. So again, let's take off the reverb and the EQ and play that same progression. Now let's add the reverb and the EQ back in. Reverb and EQ off. Not bad. Reverb and EQ on. Night and day difference. And so that's the sound we want when we're trying to flow or you want that eth ethereal atmospheric vibe. All right. So that's EQ and reverb. Now, the, the next step you can take is to add a soft pad under. So your keyboard should have a layer function. 99% uh, of them do. I did a review on a budget keyboard that had like every keyboard's got a layer function these days and so does your software. That's just when you have two sounds going at once. So we've got, I want to layer it with this pad. Okay. And so when you have your pad, again, it's like reverb. You want it felt, not necessarily heard. So I really don't want it like up and loud. I just want it to be felt and heard. And I want to make sure it's got some decay on that. So what, what I mean by decay is, or the release. So check this out. I can play the pad. And then let's take the reverb off. You hear that? It cuts off immediately. That's called release. And so anytime you want something to be atmospheric or ethereal, you want a longer release. Check this out. Let's go make it longer. See that? Now that's a little bit too long, but it's just like the reverb tail. We don't want a short reverb tail. So I'm gonna cut the reverb back on so I can kind of blend the tail of the two together. Shorten a little bit. So what's cool about this, this is a very subtle but powerful effect. This pad is going to complement the reverb. So essentially they're gonna do the same thing but they're different textures. So if I turn the reverb off, it still feels like the reverb's on, that's on purpose. And then when I turn the reverb on, right? So you can't tell too much of the difference but that's the point. You want your pad to blend in with your reverb, um, and then watch what happens when I add the piano back in. 
you see that? Now, I don't want the pad to be heard that much. There's two ways we can tackle this. One is with volume, right? And we can fade it in. So you can hear it in those high notes. So that's a, that's one way is just simply just to turn the volume down. Okay. The next thing we can do is EQ. So here's the pad at full volume. If I wanted to, I can take a high pass filter and I can pull that EQ back, uh, pull the high pass filter down so that way, you see that? That's the high pass filter. So here's bright. And that's kind of where I want it right there. We can take it back a little more. Now we can turn it down. See, now this is the pad of full volume. So we turned it down using EQ, not the volume. Now we blend it. So now I'm turning down the volume. So it's there, but it's so much more subtle. Boom. So now we've got our pad mixed in with our reverb and our EQ. You hear that sustain on top? That's the pad. So when I'm using my pads, I like for the pads to be felt more so than heard. And that way when I do my embellishments at the top, that's when the pad comes in. And it just holds those notes and it holds that, it makes the reverb feel like it's still on. Cause see the reverb is gone, but that pad acts like the reverb and you feel that subtle sustain because a keyboard doesn't have long sustain, right? Once you hit a key, it dies out. But the reverb and the pad act as the sustain. And so now you can hold chords out. Does that make sense? So um, half the battle when you're flowing is your sound design and action. So take your sound design and your sound selection very, very serious because if we take all the stuff out and go back to the stock sound, right? That's the stock piano sound. Now let's go back to our sound that we made. way more lush, hits you way more in the heart. So one more time. Again, your sound selection is huge. Here is our bass sample. Not bad at all, but let's go back to our sound design. Boom. Okay, and now there's one more last step that we can do. Um, there's actually a bunch of things you can do, but sound design, the sound design is unlimited. But delay is a fun one to mess with. So we can do delay. Um, two, three, four. So delay. Now, obviously, I don't want that much um, delay to be heard. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea what the effect is. Um, when, again, with the delay, we can also EQ the delay. So rather than turning it down, let's first change the texture. Here's a high pass on the delay instead. And then let's see here. Here. 
Now with the delay, you adjust the feedback. The feedback is how many repeats are actually happening. So if I have full feedback, it's just gonna go for a lot. Now if I bring the feedback down, so there's about four repeats there, so let's do about three. Boom. Okay, and then you wanna figure out your tempo. This is quarter notes. I tend to like mine a little bit faster. See, you see, I, I like the faster one better. And then I'm gonna turn the, I'm gonna blend it. So I'm gonna turn it more dry. So. You see that? So you, you hear, you feel it more than you hear it. You want it to be more like glue. see that so it's nice and atmospheric ethereal boom so that is a crash course and just some sound design um, I've got a full course on sound design and patch selection, um, but this one should get you over for this flow course. Again, you've got your bass sound with just the piano by itself. All right, we add the reverb in there. We add our pad in there. Then we add our EQ. Then we add our delay. Now you've got your amazing sound patch. So I will catch you guys in the next one.